people, you're a superhero, right? So it doesn't make any sense. Like you can't picture Iron Man being like, okay, here's some like grunt Hydra guy. And he goes, Ugh, and he misses. All of a sudden he do a really low damage attack and you're like, I don't get, like this doesn't feel, this, this isn't fulfilling the fantasy at all. Hello, beta testers. The still buggy Marvel's Avengers game by disgraced developers Crystal Dynamics embraced a philosophy of nerfing superheroes with every update. Because of the lazy choice to constantly throttle player progression to artificially lengthen potential player engagement without them actually having to make any new content outside of microtransactions. They nerf progression, charge for XP boosters, no new content, endless grind for garbage loot that'll inevitably get nerfed because, to Dildo Dynamics, that is somehow what represents a power fantasy. Only fantasy fulfilled here is the final fantasy, with Square Enix being able to wipe what they consider to stain from their crease. All of a sudden he'd do a really low damage attack and you're like, I don't get, like this doesn't feel, this, this isn't fulfilling the fantasy at all. This is what a Chad sounds like. So let me address what very specifically is going to put a lot of people off this game is the fact that it's a card game. And I, I understand where you're coming from, but if you've heard of a game called Yu-Gi-Oh, which is also a show, you may have heard of Exodia. Exodia is a monster card in five parts. And if the player simply ends up with all five of those cards in their hand, they, they just win. If you play dominoes, any kind of card game, your lips should be curling into a smirk at the very idea of winning the game full stop because of what's in your hand. And you've probably been in situations where you knew based on what was in your hand that you've won. That got him moment is everything. Don't be scared of card games because some of them are incredible. If you think that I'm lying, go play a game called Slay the Spire. I know titles like this, it's like saying it's the Dark Souls of blank. But a seasoned gamer mentioned Slay the Spire verbatim to the game director, and here is how he responded. And you're like, oh my God, this is the greatest ability that I have ever drawn in the game. Slay the Spire. Yeah, exactly, yes, that's, that's the feeling. And the fun comes down to breaking the game at some point. The fun comes down to breaking the game at some point. Now compare King Solomon's firm understanding that players seek to break the game with overpowered synergies, combos, abilities, to the nerf every update ideology of the unimaginative and lazy virgin dweebs puttering around at crystal fucknamics. The fun comes down to breaking the game at some point. You're always building towards like breaking the game somehow. This is what a Chad sounds like. That was spoken like a true gamer, not triggered babies messaging niggas online because their game is shitty and they're caught in their own lies. Even if this dude is telling lies, at least he knows what lies people want to hear. And with so effortless a demonstration that he's in touch with players, it shows that this game's already in better hands than that other cancer that is a tutorial on how never to make a Marvel game. It's like, if I have this ability, and I line this up and all these right things happen. You just have these moments where you're like, boom, everybody's dead in one turn. And you're like, that was awesome. In Slay the Spire, it's about building a deck, upgrading the right cards, finding the right relics, and doing what would reinforce your specific play style. Learning how to properly, in a single word, synergize. These relics or mods or artifacts or whatever the hell they want to call them, by definition, are game changers. Raw damage increases, uh, no cost to play cards or, or heroic abilities, straight up invulnerability, you name it. These RNG perks and modifiers are what will lead to infinitely varied encounters until you learn what synergy is your exodia. And if this director's money is where his mouth is, Fire Axis has scattered infinity stones across their game with the expectation and invitation that you not only find them, but impress them with synergies that had not occurred to them. You're always waiting for that moment where you're like, oh, the designer's definitely been playing on this. Is it rude to say that it sounds like this dude has friends? Like real friends, not exclusively Twitter allies that are identically minded and strictly politically correct, but real people with flaws, character, and not everyone aspires to be a life is strange writer. <laughs> And this game 
If it didn't already secure my support by paying attention to the right characters that have been overlooked even though they showed how lucrative Marvel was, I'd have been on board with people in touch enough to not blow smoke up players' asses. Fire Axis is showing, not telling. Marvel has solo heroes, sure, but the teams are where the magic happens. Synergy is what it's all about, and no one with any modicum of talent, creativity, ambition, imagination, would use characters like this and not synergize the way that Crystal Dynamics Amber heard it all over Marvel as if it was Johnny Depp's fucking bed. Rest in peace, Vince, for creating combat in a game where they can't even get characters to stop flying around in A-pose. That is a glitch today in that game that came out in 20 fucking 20. Listen when I say, beta testers may remember my synergy education in my exploration of everything Marvel's Avengers lack. Something half a century old comics understood, decades old TV shows and movies nailed, and even fucking Lego games understand better. I hear y'all on this card game shit, and I'm not implying that y'all should support anything that you don't want to see more of. But this is looking like something I want to see more of. Props to game director Jake Solomon and the developers at Fire Axis for injecting passion into their creation. Credit where credit is due to me does not mean praising for the bare minimum and things that I'm paying for. It doesn't mean backpats for cleaning up a mess that you created or going back on dumb choices that they made. Greatness deserves credit. When you're good at something, you'll tell everyone. When you're great at something, they'll tell you. This game's made by educated people. They did not create the game in a vacuum while ignoring source material and rejecting feedback or critique. Their goal is not to dump something out objectively deplorable and then try to argue with people online on that snowflake mode comment hiding and all critique is hate crystal dynamics horseshit. These devs ain't that. And I haven't scratched the surface in talking about the actual game because so charmed by the charisma of the game developer who is spitting what needed to be said that I had to spotlight him specifically. I'd love to dig deeper into Marvel's Midnight Suns, if you care, but if not, you can just wait until the game comes out. I'll play the shit out of that. You'll see whether or not it's something that's worth your time. A bunch of creators uh, were, I guess, in the midst of these dudes, and they've come away with hours of footage that many of them have condensed into 40-plus uh, minute uh, things. If you'd like me to comb through that and make a based condensation of it all, let me know. Otherwise... See you when the game launches, whenever that may be. I, I thank you for watching. Cheers to a merry Marvel future, true believers. Here's a clip of me screaming playing Spider-Man because it was so responsive that I didn't have to get hit. Enjoy the cringe. Your turn. You're webbed. Coyota! Get fucked! Sit! Touch me if you're fast enough! I'm coming for you, boy. Marked. Coming. Sit down! You're fucking nothing! You thought I forgot? Kyle, baby! I'm so sorry, babe. I'm so sorry.